We're on this series on the spiritual milestone markers of Jesus Christ and understanding the gospel and what he has done for us. We dealt with the incarnation, uh, the death, the resurrection. Today we are in the ascension. It's really important to understand the ascension because oftentimes uh, so much of our faith is about obeying, worshiping, following Jesus that we fail to realize how much has been done for us that in trying times like we are facing today, that we can actually be uplifted by what Jesus has done and is continuing to do for us right at this moment. I'm gonna read you perhaps the most referred to passage in the New Testament from the Old. It's in Psalm 110 verse one goes like this, a psalm of David. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. Now what this passage is talking about is what occurred after Jesus was resurrected from the dead. See, oftentimes our faith focuses on the crucifixion and the, re and the resurrection and not enough on the ascension. The ascension is a different part. It's when Jesus goes up to heaven and you say, what is he doing in heaven? Isn't it all about forgiveness? Isn't it then about uh, a hope in a new life to come? No, no, no. The ascension is a very different animal and a different beast. It was so much in the mindset of the early followers of Jesus that the early sermons in the book of Acts all included reference of Jesus at the right hand of the Father. The first message at Pentecost by Peter uh, in chapter 2 of Acts. Uh, Acts chapter 5, another message of Peter when he is arrested. And then the martyrdom of Stephen in Acts 7, he also two times makes reference to Jesus at the right hand of the Father. Now what does that mean? It's more than just a, a position or a place, and he's like a statue just standing there. I think the scriptures make it very clear of what this actually means in terms of uplifting our faith and our emotions as we follow Jesus. Let me give you some passages here in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. And I'm going to read you verse 20, and maybe a few verses after that. It goes like this that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and he gave him as the head over all things to the church. Now what this passage is talking about, is the authority of Jesus Christ at the right hand. That now he is the place of significance, of influence with the Father. Do you feel that way? Do you feel that your faith, do you feel that Jesus our Lord has triumphed, is far greater than any ruler, any difficulty in this life? This is very, very important because even though we may feel we are defeated, and we are in dire straits in the circumstances we are in. In reality, Jesus Christ has triumphed and is bringing forth his purpose through us. That's really interesting because the victory has been won and the outcome has been guaranteed. We have to trust and believe that all the things in life it's really a matter of Christ conquering in the circumstances in life to bring forth his purpose. Don't let the circumstances become the little g-god in your life to determine uh, what your emotions, your spiritual emotions are. Jesus has already conquered and is at the right hand of the Father. There's another important passage about Jesus at the right hand of the Father. It's, it's found in uh, the book of Romans, chapter 8. And I'm going to read you a few verses, starting with verse 34. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus 
is the one who died. More than that, he was raised, who is at the right hand of the Father. Death, resurrection, at the right hand of the Father. I hope you noticed that. Who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or the sword. Then he talks about angels who can separate us in terms of angelic power. This is a very, very important passage because the concept of Jesus at the right hand of God is not only found in the mouths of the Apostle Peter. It is very much embedded in the letters by the Apostle Paul. In this passage, Jesus is now interceding for us at the right hand. You think our prayer life was good in the Old Testament. You haven't seen anything yet, for Jesus is not only uh, uh, the high priest helping our prayers to go to the Father, Jesus himself is interceding for us and praying for us. Did you understand that? Do you, do, do you know that you have an advocate with God? It's Jesus Christ. Not only is Jesus our advocate and he's our intercessor, but according to this text, he is also our protector, guaranteeing that, again, circumstances of life, death, persecution, tribulation, and even the spiritual dark powers in this world cannot separate us from the love of God. See, things may look bad in this life. But in Christ, we have a secure place, protection, because Jesus is at the right hand of the Father.